Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here, and today I'm going to give you my 20 favorite builds of all time to play. All of these builds will still be playable in Last Epoch. They're not going to be the most powerful builds, but they're going to be the ones that I have enjoyed playing the most over all of my years in Last Epoch. I'm going to try and narrow it down to 30 seconds or less of gameplay while I cover the main mechanics of the build, so you can get a good visual and concept of the build at the same time. There will be a link in the description with a timestamp for all 20 of these linking to their build guides on YouTube. With that in mind, let's go ahead and get it started with 1.0 just around the corner. Let's see if any of these look like one that you'd like to start off the new cycle with. Starting off strong in the number one spot, we have the Void Knight Auto Bomber, and this one should come as no surprise as it's probably my most played build over all my years in Last Epoch. This is where you are a Sentinel class, you choose the Void Knight Mastery, and then you have tons of Void damage being proc through Devouring Orb and Smite. As you can see in the gameplay, you can race forward from groups of mobs to the next batch with Shield Rush, while having tons of Void spell damage going off in all directions. Coming in at the number to spot we have the rampaging lightning werebear and with this it is a very fast paced druid mastery in which you are transformed into the werebear and then get to have a no cooldown traversal skill called rampage that puts you on all fours running bear and as you are channeling it you have multiple lightning strikes coming down every second hitting all the nearby enemies the funnest thing about this is it's very fast paced and just very pleasing to strike all of your enemies as you just run past them. I definitely recommend giving this one a shot. Ever wondered what it's like to set the entire world on fire? Well, now you can with the Burning Man Rune Master. This is an Ignite based Rune Master that's doing a ton of fire damage with the fire conversion of Frostclaw, applying tons and tons of Ignite and spreading flames, which will bounce around enemies, especially in mob dense packs. This is a very fast paced build that allows you to just set everything on fire and keep moving and it's visually very pleasing. I definitely recommend giving it a shot if you haven't played the Rune Master yet. If you're a fan of minions like I am, you're going to love them in Last Epoch. Even more, you're going to love them playing the Primalist as a Beastmaster. With that as your mastery, you then summon wolves and turn them into squirrels with a unique helmet called Herald of the Scurry. This allows you to run around with 10 super raging squirrels that go absolutely nuts, destroying everything in their path while you leap around and buff them with various skills. It's a very fast build that's extremely good at single target, and of course, if you're an animal lover you're gonna love having squirrels around you the whole time you play. And another minion build for all you minion lovers out there, this one's going to be for the Acolyte class, played as a Necromancer, having a huge number of minions, all based in cold damage for this one. You're going to have zombies that are being spawned and exploding, you're going to have mages and archers firing projectiles and spells, and overall this one really allows you to scale the damage extremely well in the end game, just having a huge army follow you around and clear the path for you. They're great for clearing as well as doing single target, and if you're a minion fan, a Again, this is definitely one you're going to want to try. Here we are cruising along at build number 7 already, and this one is the Rune Master Hydra. This is where you're going to make a construct out of your runic invocations. The construct, known as the Hydra, will be a turret that basically fires at all nearby enemies, auto-targeting them and doing huge damage. You'll summon this through a lightning fire fire runic invocation, which is really simple to get a hold of once you get the rhythm down. This build comes together extremely easily, is super fun to level with, and does extremely well in the endgame. Next, we have the Devotion Smiter Paladin. With this, you're Sentinel class with the Paladin Mastery, and you're stacking a ton of mana and using that to synergize with Devotion, a unique amulet that gives you more flat spell damage with Smite, allowing you to hit really, really hard with it. As you can see here, you just throw it down a single time on enemies, and it absolutely annihilates them. It is a fast-paced, spell-based Paladin that's tanky and can deal out the damage. Coming in at number 8, we have the Shadow Daggers Blade Dancer, which is a very fast paced build that's based around doing it melee slash throwing damage with Shadow Daggers being procced by you and your shadows. Basically, you shift, dropping a shadow, and then automatically using Shadow Cascade, which then makes all of your shadows also use Shadow Cascade, throwing out tons of knives that all apply Shadow Daggers. And when all those Shadow Daggers hit targets, you then get the plunge effect at a certain amount of stacks of Shadow Dagger, allowing for a major critical 
strike to happen absolutely tearing through enemies and allowing you to progress through the game extremely fast it is a very fast very fun playstyle if you like just cruising as fast as you can go I'm a huge fan of bow attacks, but I hate single target projectiles, and that's where the bow mage, which is flurry proccing multi-shot with tons of projectiles and icicles to boot, comes into play. My favorite archer build in Last Epoch, just based on the sheer amount of projectiles that you get to fire off and proc at nearby enemies. It does great damage, it's very fast paced, and it's been bugged for the last few patches, and it should be fixed in 1.0, but it's still a very solid build to play. While I'm a huge fan of minion builds i'm even bigger fan of blowing those minions up and that's exactly what you can do with the lich class this allows you to run sacrifice on your minions and in this setup you're in reaper form casting off sacrifice and absolutely annihilating all of those skeletons that you summoned into a huge explosion dealing huge damage to enemies a very fun build to play especially if you like seeing large explosions and doing it to your own minions and going right back to keeping our minions alive, here's another Necromancer build that's a minion build based around Fire Rays, which are a ray that decays its health over time. We've converted it to fire, so we're only summoning the fire version of them. They have basically a casting a fireball that does huge damage. We build into their crit chance and crit multi, and we can have up to 20 of them active, which allows us to really narrow down on single target enemies as well as clear maps with fireballs going all over the place. Very fast build that allows you with drain life to have basically unlimited leech and mana allowing for a very fun time to keep all those minions up. I definitely wasn't lying when I said that minions are definitely my favorite playstyle in Last Epoch, and they did a really good job with them. There are tons of variety, and here's another one after we've already mentioned all the previous. This one is the Abomination, in which you summon the Abomination by sacrificing different types of other minions, which will give your Abomination different effects depending on what you've sacrificed. With that, you can even get it to where he doesn't DK health, allowing you to keep him up infinitely. At the same time, he has a huge amount of health, does a ton of amount of damage and can rock the battle completely by himself. He is a huge monster on the battlefield, looking terrifying and definitely a deadly foe for any of the enemies that you encounter. A very fun minion build that you definitely need to try with its unique playstyle if you have the chance. And after you're done playing the Abomination, it's time to give the Golem a try. The Golem is a very tanky, also big terrifying looking golem that will annihilate your enemies for you and in this case we set him up as a retaliation where he retaliates every time that we hit him with our spell marrow shards making him hit enemies as fast as we can cast it he does a ton of damage he's very tanky and this is a great fast-paced build if you enjoy minions this point you're probably catching on to the type of builds that I like and that's both minions and explosions and this one is the latter. This one allows you to have tons of explosions with elemental nova, frost claw, and spark charges along with lightning blasts procking all over the place giving you tons of different lightning skills all going off affecting all the enemies resulting in a huge amount of explosions that just take all of your enemies out of the equation. A very fun, fast-paced build for the Rune Master that's also very tanky due to the sheer amount of ward that you can generate with skill use. I definitely recommend giving this one a try as it is one of the newer masteries and is a ton of fun to play. Well, I told you that I like minions and I told you I like explosions, so why not put them together with another exploding minion build? In this case, we have the Thorn Totem Shaman, which you're going to be playing in Spriggan form, summoning your healing totems, which will be using the Thorn Totem skill tree, and you're going to summon them as fast as you can, and every time you summon more than your maximum amount that you're allowed to have, the previous ones explode, dealing damage to everything in their area of effect. As you can see here, it absolutely annihilates bosses, and it's very fun to play, clearing through echoes as well. You're very tanky in Spriggan form, which allows you to complete all of the content in the game, and of course, do that in a very fun fun style of exploding minions. Alright, I promise this is the last minion build for me before we get into some heavy hitters, and this one is the Storm Crow Beastmaster. We're going to be playing this as a Beastmaster with our Storm Crows buffing us while doing good damage themselves. It's going to be based around having a ton of upheavals and swipes going off while your crows just absolutely annihilate the enemies. We're buffing them with all the melee attacks we do, really buffing up their damage to the point where they kill everything before we can even get a melee attack off. Once they back off a bit, we then 
scaling up again by getting in some melee hits, and it's a back and forth to see who can deliver the hit before the other one kills the enemy. Every now and again, a new skill gets added to last epoch, and that's what happened with Umbral Blades stealing away my attention the moment that it arrived. With it, you can turn it into a spinning storm that has a blade storm that's spinning in a circle, dealing damage to everything. In the gameplay, there are five of them. It's been nerfed since then, so you can only have three, but it's still a very viable build, especially if you pair it up with applying shadow daggers. But it's a fun build in which you create shadows, keep moving, and then those shadows create blade storms for you which will attack all of the enemies that are chasing you from behind overall a very fast pace and a very fun build to play it's visually pleasing to have storms being procced everywhere now that we're done with minions, let's get into some hard-hitting spells. With the Mage Sorcerer, and with this one, you're procking a huge glacier that does multiple hits with every time that you cast it, getting mana back that you spent with every crit that it does, allowing you to just continuously spam it all of the time. It hits in a huge area and absolutely hits like a truck, it sh as it should, as it's a huge iceberg hitting the enemies straight on. Overall, a very fast-paced, fun build, and very easy to put together. I definitely recommend this if you like playing with heavy hitting spells and are a fan of the Sorcerer class. And speaking of hard hitting skills, here's another one for you. This one played as the Spellblade instead of the Sorcerer using Shatter Strike, which allows you to use a melee skill that hits in a huge area and inside of its skill tree allows you to recast it up to two more times after a single cast which allows you to just absolutely annihilate enemies in a huge area because it scales up very well with melee damage, critical strike chance, and critical strike multiplier, especially if you're dual wielding. Go ahead and throw this onto a single target and you can wither down a boss's life incredibly fast with how fast you can actually attack with it since your next attack can start before the previous one has really finished. Overall, very powerful build and very fun to play, although you will have to mess around with your mana regen from time to time. And my final favorite build for you guys is another Sorcerer build using Disintegrate. Here you'll have two beams that deal just a huge amount of damage. Now, it does consume a lot of mana to channel it for a long period of time, making single target kind of slow, but with the unique interaction between Innovar's head and the Gambler's Fallacy unique, you get to turn a ton of crit chance into a bunch of damage over time damage for you, which you won't ruin because as a dot skill, you won't do any critical strikes, and it allows you just to melt all the enemies you touch instantly with your dual beams. Overall, a very fast paced and super fun build to play. I definitely recommend it if you're okay with playing channeled abilities. With all that in mind, those are the 20 of my most favorite builds over all of my hours of playing Last Epoch. I hope one of these inspired you to want to go and give it a shot. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite, if any of them, and if it wasn't on the list, let me know what your favorite build is. As always, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.